Hey guys, Mike here. Quick paper I want to share with you. So this is going to be a very informal video, but it's hot off the press from the Endocrine Society. The paper is titled Executive Summary to EDC2. So this is the Endocrine Society's second scientific statement on endocrine disrupting chemicals. And let me just get to the chase and jump right to the end of this. Now, if you want to uh, read this paper, download it, share it with a physician, share it with your pediatrician or uh, someone in the chemical industry, please do. The link below uh, to this full text, uh, it's an open source PDF. You can download that to you. So let me read to you. Uh, what gave me the chills actually okay this is one of the, the final paragraphs here it says a further need for precaution is based on evidence that individuals exposed to endocrine disrupting chemicals may carry that body burden for their entire lives in the case of long-lived chemicals such as the polybrominated flame retardants and diethyl ethers and so forth now uh, that even short-lived chemicals may induce changes that are permanent and that some actions of endocrine disrupting chemicals are observed in individuals offspring Okay, so meaning that dads and moms, if you're exposed to these compounds and have kids, those compounds affect the offspring's endocrine system, female reproductive system, hormone reproductive system, and more. Now here's a really powerful final sentence here. It says, transgenerational, meaning these effects carry on throughout generations, okay? Transgenerational effect, effects of endocrine disrupting chemicals mean that even if a chemical is removed from use, so even if we introduce one of these chemicals into the environment and later find, find out that, oh my goodness, it has these profound effects, even if we remove that, its imprints on the exposed individual's DNA may persist for generations and possibly forever. And so that's what's really scary about these endocrine disrupting chemicals is they're rarely tested in humans. They're mostly te tested in animal models, in isolation, not in the synergistic effects that we're all exposed to, you know, in air, food, water, in our clothing, our, our uh, pillows and couches and bedding and so forth. We all have a lot of these levels, even polar bears in Antarctica have high levels of these in their blood. So certainly you, if you're listening to this or watching this in an industrialized air, uh, place in the world definitely have high levels of this in your bloodstream now uh, what's really powerful is, is these compounds have been shown to affect our epigenome and that's the, the, the molecular structure of our DNA and change gene expression that affect obesity diabetes female and hormone reproductive issues uh, neurodevelopmental issues um, thyroid issues prostate issues breast health much more so very powerful stuff Again, this paper was just published today by the Endocrine Society. It's a follow-up to their EDC-1, which was published in 2009. And if you're interested in diving into this in more detail, I posted the link below this video in a blog post that I did back in 2012. So it's a little bit old, but it went, it went through the different pharmacokinetic effects and the differences between an endocrine disrupting chemical that affects our hormonal axis and how that is different from say testosterone and estrogen and thyroid hormone. Because all of our own endogenous hormones adhere to linear pharmacokinetics and they are often bound to binding globulins, whereas like sex hormone binding globulin, thyroid uh, hormone binding globulin and so forth. That's why you know the body can help to regulate hormonal levels uh, in a, in a system. In contrast, these endocrine uh, disrupting chemicals don't bind to those binding globulins. They exist in the free state. So they can actually antagonize your own hormones at the receptor level. They can change receptor function and cause the you know cellular cascade as though the message is there. And they can do a lot of nasty things. So big, uh, big aha moment here, breakthrough from the Endocrine Society. Please share this information. Uh, send a, a, a copy to a physician that you know or a pediatrician, someone to influence them to read this and take action on this. So again, thanks for tuning in. Click the link below if you want to get the PDF. Talk to you soon.